Welcome to Cosplay Stitch and Seam. I'm Panin. And I'm the Fire. And I'm David. Hooray! Welcome to the show. We're excited to have you guys. Uh, as ever, if you want to reach out to us, you can always contact us via email, and that is at cosplaystitchandseam at gmail.com, or... Or you can go to the website, cosplaystitchandseam.com, and fill out the Google form there, or... You can go to our Facebook page, like our page, tell us your stories there, and you could also, while you're there, join our Work in Progress Wednesdays and hear about all the cool things that we might be doing before we get a chance to announce it on the podcast. Um, while you're on the internet, if you want to support the show, there's so many different ways that you can do that. Leave us a review on Apple Podcasts or Stitcher, and we will give you a shout out on the show. We have our Patreon, uh, patreon.com forward slash cosplay stitch, uh, where you can get a shout out or join our online D&D game that's a private stream, but you get the audio later if you can't uh, support us there or you, we have our coffee account or Ko-Fi if you want to just drop a few dollars our way that would be awesome too or you could just share the show with a friend awesome thanks so much um, so this week we are talking about how to kind of kickstart your sewing uh, ways to get started and like I feel like sewing is kind of like a little bit scary for some people starting out um, hello so- <laughs> <that's> me <laughs> So we have a special guest this week, Kia Sangria. Would you like to tell us a little bit about yourself? Yes, um, definitely. Thank, first of all, thank you guys so much for having me. I'm super excited to be here with you guys tonight, all the way from yeah. New York City. Um, oh. <laughs> yes, I'm from New York, the Big Apple. My name is Kia Sangria. I'm a New York City-based cosplayer and performer. I have been sewing for about seven years, and tonight I'm really excited to talk to you guys about my sewing journey and, you know, tips and tricks that I have for you guys as you go along on yours. Um, I think sewing is a wonderful hobby. It's a wonderful skill to have. And especially when it comes to the realm of cosplay, the the possibilities are absolutely endless. Awesome. Um, So where can people find you, Kia? So you can find me online on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube as Kia Sangria. And that's K-I-A and then just like the drink Sangria, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So what got you into cosplay in the first place? So honestly, and I I feel like a lot of people or a lot of girls especially say this, but for me, it was watching the anime Sailor Moon when I was little. Yes! Oh my gosh. I I used to rush home after school to catch it uh, Uh on Cartoon Network at like 3 p.m. in the afternoon. And yes. I was just so memorized, like mesmerized, like by these girls and how powerful they were, but especially their costumes. I wanted to be a Sailor Scout so bad, so bad. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that's really what did it for me. It was surprising enough, though. I have actually yet to make a Sailor Scout uniform. I don't know how that happened or how I made it this far <laughs> without ever sewing one. <laughs> I know, but you know, here I am uh, in this year of 27th year of my life, and I still have not cosplayed um, a Sailor Scout. Oh, dang. (laughs) That's awesome. Like, I can very much relate. I haven't done it either. (laughs) (laughs) So, you know, technically, I haven't done the Sailor Scout uniform, but I actually, Hmm. my very first costume that I made with Fabric Wholesale Direct was Sailor Neptune's princess dress. So I, I think that counts, but it's still oh, not yeah. a Sailor uniform. Um, and one day I will eventually make one. I say That's that counts because awesome. I haven't even done that. <laughs> <laughs> That is awesome. I I mean, I, of course, love a good Sailor Moon story. I love a good Sailor Moon costume, no matter what it is. So <laughs> I'm happy to hear that because, yeah, I got Princess Neptune for you, but I don't have Sailor Princess <laughs> Neptune yet. No, I was I was very excited stalking your Instagram a little bit, and I was like, okay, things in common. We both love Sailor Moon. We both love JoJo's Bizarre Adventure. Yes. I think we can be friends. So. Uh, I am absolute JoJo trash, but that is a yes. whole story. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that's amazing. So, um, of all the costumes you've done, I noticed you do like all kinds of like pop culture stuff. I even noticed that you did like uh gremlins, uh like a Gijinka of Greta from Gremlins, which blew my mind. Um Oh my gosh, that was so cool. It's so Thank cute. You. Um, but uh what would you say your favorite that you've ever worn or made is? 
Uh, that is like the hardest question that anyone has ever <laughs> asked me because for one, I'm always making something. Um, mm. So I'm actually uh, in this season and I guess it's really cliche for me to say it, but for me, my favorite costume thus far that I've made and worn, I have to really give it to this Beetlejuice cosplay that I made very Ooh, recently. Yeah, yeah. Um, there was a lot of challenges in, with making that costume. One was like trying to match the stripes as best as I can. Oh, and stripes are such a pain. <laughs> yeah, it really was. But also it was the, I learned a lot of things while sewing it. And I think that's what I appreciate the most about making my costumes is that each time I make one, I learn something new that like propels me uh, into making like the next costume. And this costume was my third time making a corset because mm. I had recently made one uh, prior mm -hmm. to this. So this was my third corset and it came out so beautifully and yeah, there was just a lot of challenges with this costume. And I, I especially like projects that challenge me because I, I get to learn a lot of things when doing so. Nice. So would you say that sewing then is your specialty as far as cosplay or? Um, Sorry, I cut yeah, myself no, off there. No, <laughs> or, or are there other things you love more? <laughs> no, sewing is most certainly my specialty when it comes to, to cosplay. And I do a lot of things because like I design nails, I make wigs. Um, I do makeup, which is another one of oh, my dang. vices. Uh, so I do a little bit of everything. But yeah, I think taking like a needle to thread is really what gets me going about like cosplay. And um, sewing in general, it's it's just one of the things that I love. Like I don't just sew cosplay, I actually sew clothing as well. Um, hmm. Your so just, uh, experience with the uh, like Fabric Wholesale Direct, like creating the, like the tutorials and things for them. Like with your love of sewing and all that stuff, like how did that all like suddenly like come together and have you be able to do that? Like it's super, super cool. Well, so it all started back in, I want to say March or no, actually it was Feb, it was January. So January, it's 2020. I'm like, this is going to be my year. <laughs> it it we, was nobody's we'll year. Good. It has been nobody's year. <laughs> um, but I, I had decided back in January that, you know, this is going to be my year that I start doing more with the skills that I have and, you know, just kind of making a name for myself and doing things that excite me. And so I came across Fabric Wholesale Direct because I was just looking for fabric online for things that I, I wanted to make. And I noticed that they had a blog and there was a cosplayer that was on it um, prior to me. And she, I think she did like two blog posts. And but I didn't see anything else after that. And so I sent them an email saying, you know, hey, my name is Kia Sangria. I'm a New York City based cosplayer. And mm -hmm. I see that you have a blog and I would love to write for it by, you know, creating like tutorials similar to the ones that you have here explaining how I make some of my cosplays. Nice. That's so cool that you like saw the need and, and were able to just like swoop in and fill it like that. That's really cool. Yeah, that's normally how I go looking um, for things because one of the, my biggest things uh, when it comes to everything I do is that I want to be of service. And so, you know, looking at their blog and their website, it was just like, okay, how can I take my cosplay skills and be of service to you? And, you know, I highlighted the fact that I really wanted to kind of bridge like the cosplay community with a lot of these companies because in general sewing circles, I don't feel like cosplayers are represented. Mm. Um, if you go to like a couple of like Instagram pages for like other sewing communities, you really won't see cosplay creations. And I feel like mm -hmm. uh, the costumes that we make are just as cool as anyone's tablecloth or quilt. And oh, so totally. I wanted to like carve a space for cosplayers like here. And I was able to do that through Fabric Wholesale Direct. That That's is so, so cool. cool. No, I I really love that uh, you like, especially with like your Princess Peach tutorial. That uh, I know a lot of people struggle when reading a pattern, especially when they're getting started. So having that visual, like step by step of everything that you are doing and seeing it in the cosplay, like fabric and all the close ups and things like that. That's so helpful for someone who's like looking at a pattern going, what on earth am I supposed to be doing? Even as like a veteran, I still struggle. And like <laughs> those visuals again are amazing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> what would you say then to people who are looking to get sewing for the first time? It's, it feels like kind of a big step because there's so many things you can go into. You can talk about like what machines and what sewing techniques and how to read patterns. Like, it can feel really overwhelming. So what advice would you have for someone who wants to try? 
I I would honestly say start where you are. Um, and if that's just with a needle and thread and maybe like a bed sheet, then that's where you start. Um, mm. You start by like altering some of the clothing that you have in your closet already. Um, I feel like, and people ask me, well, how do I learn how to sew? What should I make? I tell people that the very first project that you should take on is a pillowcase. Mm. <laughs> I know it's such a random item, but the reason why I say a pillowcase is because it's not something that you sew and then you put it somewhere and it looks nice. It's something that you actually use. Mm -hmm. And because it's something that you actually use, you'll put more time into it. And if it doesn't feel good, you'll know it when you're sleeping on it. So <laughs> it's, I know it's weird, but you, when you're no, sleeping a, on that pillowcase and a stitch is not lined up the way that it's supposed to, to be, you're going to feel that and you're going to know where you went wrong. <laughs> But then you'll also know how to correct it. That's I feel incredibly like clever. <laughs> I feel like it's almost like the the dog that's done a bad thing. Like you, because you'll literally be rubbing your face in it. Like, oh, yeah. I feel what I did wrong. It's right there. <laughs> <laughs> but that's how it needs to be. It's easy to say, yeah. oh, I'm going to sew this thing and then just put it here. And, you know, just because it looks nice doesn't mean that it's actually going to feel nice. But making mm -hmm. something that you can use that you can actually feel against your skin Mm -hmm. That's how you move up from making something that not only looks great, but feels great. That's a very good point. I like that a lot. And also, I like sewing something functional that you'll actually like use on a regular basis. Yeah, there's a sense of accomplishment there. And I think everyone should experience that. For sure. It's so funny that you mentioned like start with the things that you already have or alter things. Um, my wife recently just started going on their own personal adventure of, well, we have this bed sheet. Let me just turn it into a circle skirt. Those are super easy. And nice. within less than a week, we went to Joanne's, we bought a pattern and made a whole skirt with pockets and everything. And it's just like That's this. That's so cool. It's become overwhelming in this house. But at the same time, like, yeah just that one small thing is enough to like really inspire other people for like, Oh, I did this thing. Maybe I can do more. And then I I'm just now watching my wife just excel into the starlights because it's just so amazing Aww. to watch. Well, I'm really happy for them. Um, yeah, that's it's, it's, I mean, I can understand why it sounds like such a big mystery. Like, Oh, how do I get started? But no, it's really just start where you are. And I say this because like, I wish I could go back and tell like 13 year old me to kind of like, you know, start with what you have, because I talked myself out of a lot of projects and a lot of costumes that I wanted to do because I didn't feel like I had the fabric or the talent or the skill or, or the patience. I didn't, I didn't start where I was when I did get started. I kind of like had to invest some and make some very expensive mistakes. And I don't want anyone Oof. to feel like they have to do that. Oh yeah. I've wasted plenty of fabric and I don't, I don't want no. anyone to ever <laughs> feel like they have to jump in on the deep end. I understand there's a certain level of like, I guess accomplishment where it's like, yeah, I jumped in on the deep end and now I'm good. But it's like, you know what? You don't really have to do that. And I don't suggest you do that as someone who like jumped off the deep end. So don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Start oh, no, totally. <laughs> it, like I love when cosplayers are like looking for like the the fabrics that they think suit the character really well and things like that. But like sometimes you want to just be like, okay, but like maybe practice a mock up because that's like thirty dollars a yard fabric. Yeah, <laughs> mock ups are so yeah. important. And like once upon a time, people were like, oh, you need to make a mock up, and I was like, what? No, I'm not doing that. No. <laughs> I was just like, like, I'm not gonna sew this twice. <laughs> why? why would I do that? Why would I do that? Please, if you are like listening to this, please do that. I know you don't want to do it, but do do the mock up, okay? Do the mock up. You will do feel the mock up much better with the final product. <laughs> you 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 really will. You really will. And it's like I know, like I know, it sucks to sew something twice because also it's mm. like, damn, I got to buy the same material twice. I don't want to do that, but I swear it'll make you so 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 much better it'll make you so much better um when it comes to like creating things and I, I think that's where the frustration can come from when it comes to sewing because people are like oh well did you did you test it out first and it's like some patterns you don't need to test it out but other patterns mm -hmm. you do like for a pillowcase you don't need to test that out but if you're making a dress bodice yeah you kind of have to make sure that it it fits right and this mm -hmm. actually leads me to another point when it comes to sewing so the mm -hmm. lack of patience is one thing that'll stop people because, you know, it's very easy to get frustrated. A oh, lack yeah. of knowing your measurements. 
is Mm. one of the biggest things that I find people have issues with because I actually, I think it was over the weekend on Saturday, I went on Twitter and I just posted, you know, what has been your struggle when, when sewing? And Mm -hmm. I think about five people got on that post and told me, oh, it's because the pattern measurements don't like match. They don't work. It's too big. There's a lot of reasons for that. Um, Patterns, especially commercial patterns, Simplicity, McCall's, Butterick, Quick Sew, Mm -hmm. they are all made with style ease and wearing ease. And these things refer to the wearability of the garment and how the garment is supposed to look on you in terms of style. So this is Mm -hmm. the reason why a lot of cosplayers will look at a pattern and then make something in their in the pattern based on the size chart and then end up with something that doesn't fit them right. Um, my right. thing for that is to always, but then when I asked them, I was just like, well, what are your measurements? And they're like, oh, I don't really like know them by heart. Where it's just like, well, you see, that's the problem. You mm-hmm. don't, uh, these companies, when they make these patterns, they don't know your measurements better than you do. Mm-hmm. But I can understand why it's so easy to see a size chart and then look at, you know, your measurements or where you think you might fit and be like, oh, that one right here. But that's just, that's not how it works. Um, Mm -hmm. it it doesn't work that way. And so one of the things that I encourage people to, to do is to know, know thy own measurements. (laughs) If I had a sewing Bible, I would really say that know thy measurements (laughs) (laughs) because, you know, different parts of your body, your body is all different measurements. So the same thing applies to patterns. They're not one size fits all, but when you're first getting started, it's easy to think, okay, well, this is the pattern and there's the measurement. So the pattern has all the answers. But it's like you kind of need to help it along because, for example, um, for my Beetlejuice costume, that costume had a jacket, it had a corset, and it had a skirt. Now, for looking at the measurement chart, I was a size 14 um, based on that pattern. But when I looked at my own measurements, taking them from my body, I found that I was a size 12 for the jacket, a size 10 for the corset, and a size 14 for the skirt. So that Mm. meant that when I was cutting the pattern tissue out, I had to cut out different measurements for each piece of the costume. And sometimes it's like that, but no one Mm -hmm. really Mm -hmm. said, no one really says this. And so you have someone that's in like a Joann's or something, and they're looking at a pattern and they're looking at the measurements. They're like, oh, okay, this is my size. There's no one there to tell them that, hey, you actually have to use your own measurements and then, Mm -hmm. you know, subtract or add from the pattern that you see in front of you. And the patterns themselves don't even say this, which I kind of wish they would. I understand the reason why they don't, but I wish that they would. Um, But because they don't, that's why Key is here. (laughs) 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 Key is here to explain to you that you must know thy own measurements before you can go about using a pattern because you'll end up Mm. disappointed like I was many times before. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh, totally. No, I wish more patterns. Well, I wish any patterns really like said, okay, between steps six and seven, do a fitting, make sure that this like, if you need to take this in here, here's where you can take it in, you know, because I think people have this wrong impression that just because they're buying a pattern that even fitting their measurements is just going to fit them straight off. When it, it's the same as going to like a store and buying like a size 12, a size 14. It may or may not still fit like it they're just made uh as like a factory item you know they're all the same and everyone's measurements are different so (laughs) you have to like keep that same mindset when you're looking at patterns right i definitely agree with you And, and and it's also hard because um even when someone's like explaining how to use a pattern like where i've looked on how to like use a pattern um i haven't really heard anyone say you know you need to subtract or like add your measurements and things of that nature. You need to like, you know, look at your measurements. I've always, you know, heard people refer to like the pattern. Um, another thing that I like to pay attention to as well is the finished garment measurements because yes. that basically <laughs> tells you uh, what's, you know, what the inches are in different places once this whole thing is put together. Yeah. I, I think that honestly, that's, you know, and this is probably taboo. And I don't know if anyone's going to be like, well, how can you say that it's wrong? But I really, really <laughs> suggest people look at the finished garment measurements, because now you're going to mm-hmm. see how everything is going to fit once it's all put together. 
And Mm -hmm. I have been using that for my last three projects. And I'm not really going back. (laughs) I'm not going back. (laughs) I'm not looking behind me when it comes to that. Yeah, well, it's true. Because sometimes you're like, oh, well, you know, this is my bust or waist measurement, but the pattern is supposed to fit loosely. So the finished garment measurement may be bigger, or it may be your exact measurement. And it, you know, you want to know how snug this fit is going to be. Right. And and then when in doubt, you can also, depending on what you're making, take something that's already in your wardrobe that's similar to it and just take measurements from that and just see if it's like similar or like close to the measurement that's on the pattern. I don't really have too many like ball gowns. So for like Princess Peach, for example, I kind of had to just look at like the finished garment measurements and then kind of determine the wearability that I wanted. Did I want this Mm -hmm. costume to be tighter? Did I want it to be looser? And that is what kind of like guided me in uh, the sewing process. Mm. Nice. So obviously there's a lot to consider. For new folks going in, what do you think, I guess, makes sewing feel intimidating? Or like, why do you think people would be hesitant to try? I mean, I know there's like a laundry list of reasons, but like, I don't know what have, this is kind of for all of you, but like what has made you guys hesitant in the first place to like jump on board and sew? Well, I was going to say the, you know, we've been talking about measurements here. It's even just how to measure yourself mm. can be daunting. Like you just like look at yourself and you're like, I don't want to know those numbers. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. You know. yeah. Uh, well, and it's like, and I don't even know how to get those numbers. Mm. But, you know, it all comes down to one, your bodies are all amazing. And two, like, there's people that you can always ask to try and find out how to do those measurements. Mm. Um, you know, whether it's another cosplayer or a seamstress. That's why tutorials are awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how about you, David? I mean, for me, it comes down to the fact that, like, I'm not a perfectionist, but I'm a perfectionist when it comes to <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know how to get the line ever straight. Like, no matter what I do, I, I let the foot do all the work and then it still wobbles. My cuts are never even and consistent. And that mm-hmm. is something that I allow. And I recognize this is all on me. I allow that to weigh down on me of like, ah, I should I should get back at that. But uh, my, uh, maybe, yeah. maybe if I got some more practice. Oh, look at that. I'd practice some more and I'm, and I'm not instantly better at it. <laughs> What's wrong with me? <laughs> no, I, I totally get that. For me, it was, I feel like, kind of an act of desperation because, <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, okay. So in high school, I was like, I want to be Sailor Moon for Halloween. Not just Sailor Moon, Mom. I want to be Eternal Sailor Moon. Oh my gosh. <laughs> You're asking yeah. for a lot. I yeah. And I was a bratty kid. And <laughs> after like I was like, no, mom, that doesn't look right. No, her skirt's oh like this, gosh. mom. <laughs> so by the end of Halloween, she was like, honey. I am, I'm glad you looked cute for Halloween. I am never doing this again. <laughs> Here are some patterns. Here's a sewing machine. You get to figure out the rest. So, it's like, if you're going to be this picky, you get to do yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> well. <laughs> so, 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 yeah, it was kind of a like, well, you're, you're going to learn it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, and it was a lot of trial and error because we did not have all of the like easy to find tutorials that we have today online. So, I am so grateful and pleased when I see them. So, yeah. How about you, Kia? <laughs> Honestly, I for me, it was really just a lack of confidence. Like I, mm. I did not have confidence in myself um, when it came to like sewing. And, I, and I'll let you guys in on a big secret. My very first project for like Fabric Wholesale Direct, I wasn't confident then either. Because I'm just like, oh my gosh, I have to sew and show other people how I made this. How am I gonna, <laughs> how am I gonna do that? <laughs> I'm not intimidating at all. Yeah, and I'm just like, when the fabric arrived, I was like, oh my gosh, this is real. I actually have to do this. <laughs> like, I have to turn this, this, these yards into like something. And, but yeah, I, lack of, lack of confidence was really it for me because I would see all these really cool like costumes and, and things of that nature, these characters. And 
I would just wonder like, how, how does anyone, how do you even create that? How do you make that? Mm. Like watching Sailor mm. Moon's transformation. I'm just like, how do you make that skirt? <laughs> like that flappy thing on the back of her right. top. Like, what is that even? What do you call that thing? Like I was just completely, <laughs> completely mystified. And I think that's one of the costumes that scare me too, as an adult, which is probably the reason why I haven't made one guys. Mm. I, I have yet to Fair. actually try my hand at like, making a, a sailor scout uniform just because i guess i'm so afraid of like messing it up and <laughs> so this I th- but this just goes to show you that for as much as i've i've grown when it comes to being a mm-hmm. cosplayer and creating my own costumes i still have my own growing to do too oh for sure i was gonna say like how has like uh helping out with this blog and doing all of these posts and like learning as you go kind of how has that helped your confidence it has helped it immensely, especially when people, I think that the, the the glorifying moment for me was when people started to come into my inbox and ask me, hey, can you give me advice for like how to make like this thing here or Aww. how to like do this or how do I style this or how do I like install like a zipper or something? And I was just like, wow, like people are like seeing what it is that I do and they're asking more questions. And I think that that's one of the the best things that you can do is ask. But I also understand like the intimidation that comes with it because like a lot of beginner cosplayers are really afraid of like coming to like cosplayers that have been there for a while and like asking us for help because sometimes, you know, other cosplayers really don't want to help their fellow person. Um, I want to see everybody create awesome stuff because I think we look great. Um, right. Yeah. And like one of the things that I strive out to do was like, you know, I want to, you know, as a person like, and as a, I guess, my own brand I do want to grow but I want to grow in the ways of like being able to see cosplayers in spaces that we really weren't in before and so Mm. you know working with Fabric Wholesale Direct and seeing the help that people are getting from this and knowing that I'm you know I can be of service to people that really need this information um, that's what really like got me going and it makes me like confident every single day with every single project that I take on knowing that, you know, someone is going to come to Fabric Wholesale Direct looking for fabric and they might just stumble upon this blog where they can see some cosplays being made and how to make them mm-hmm. and, you know, things of that nature because it, it's something that I myself have always wanted and, um, mm. Just recently on my YouTube channel, I uploaded a video showing how I made the corset for my Elizabeth cosplay from Bioshock because before I started using the pattern, I actually went on YouTube looking to see, hey, has anybody actually made something that shows people like how to, how to sew this mm-hmm. or is there anyone out here? And I couldn't find anything. And I was just like, okay. Oh, dang. So in addition to taking pictures for Fabric Wholesale Direct, I'll also record because I wish I had something like this. So maybe somebody else might be able to like use this video right um so basically it's just yeah being the change that i want to see and actively working toward being the change that i want to see is what's really helped like grow my confidence even more because i i have a purpose now i love that i love that so much (laughs) i was going to ask like why tutorials are important and you just like nailed it on the head there (laughs) Uh, because like you want to be that change you want to see you didn't have access to it and you want others to have it you know Uh, i i just love that mentality with cosplay where it's like i have learned something new and i want to share it Mm -hmm. and i i think that broadens so many horizons for us like i have made so many friends by learning different techniques i have met new people by asking them about how they put a piece of armor together you know it's it's just such a fun Right. It's your connected web of people. (laughs) And that's literally all it takes. And, you know, one of my friends actually recently asked me about two days ago about like possibly partnering with Fabric Wholesale Direct as well to possibly start sewing on their blog. And I told them like, you know, definitely go for it. See what else that you can offer them. Um, Because I know for me, like not just being of service, like in the space that I'm in and then being of service for other cosplayers, but I also want to see us represented in other spaces. And when I say I want to see us represented, not just my face, but but other faces too. And so for me, it's like, Mm -hmm. if I, if I get a seat at any of these tables where we were not, you know, represented before, I know that once I get a seat at the table, my job now is to open up the window and let everybody in so that we can all be in here. And so that we can all shine. Because like, once again, um, as I had said previously, 
uh, when it comes to like a lot of like sewing circles and like online sewing communities, cosplayers really aren't represented. And I don't know if it's mm. either they don't really know that we exist or if it's because what we do is so alternative that it's just like, whoa, Halloween, like every day of the year. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't know uh-huh. about that, but it's just like, but our creations are valid too. They're valid. Mm. Yeah. You know, we, totally. we work out here. Do we create amazing things? And, you know, I want to mm-hmm. see those things. I want to see those things recognized. I want to see those things right. recognized. I want to see those things celebrated. I actually nice. have a funny story dealing with like <laughs> having cosplay being brought into a space that you normally wouldn't really see it. Please share. Um, <laughs> a couple of years ago, uh, is back when I still attended, sort of attended church. Um, they uh, noticed I was not coming as much, and so they started, you know, trying to figure out, okay, what is, what does she like to do? And they found out I like sewing, but they found out I like sewing for cosplay, and they're like that's different (laughs) they invited me to come and teach uh, a bunch of ladies how to sew and they let me show off my work oh it was super cool and like they had never seen anything like it before they're like this is new um (laughs) and uh but like it was a lot of fun and then i just showed showed them some simple ways of like sewing stuff and uh it was it was actually a really cool way for me to get to know these just really nice people that i don't think i would have otherwise interacted with myself Mm -hmm. um and it was really cool being able to share just like this weird hobby of mine that i'm super super passionate about hence you know having a podcast (laughs) (laughs) and just being able to share in that with people who also you know wanted to know how to sew and those who already did and really liked it and kind of comparing notes of like different styles and things like that and I don't know in the future if I were to like do something like that again I'd want to like try and learn more from the others around me to try and expand my skill sets that way and maybe Mm. I can help them expand theirs with what I've learned as well. Nice. I absolutely, I absolutely love that. And I actually had a similar, well, I won't say it's a similar experience, but there's a con that I, I attended last year. It's called BlurCon and it's in Washington, DC. And I actually hosted a panel on like sewing for cosplay. And it was like one of the funnest panels that I've ever been on. But there was this woman in the audience that came to my panel and she was a pro and she wasn't really, she wasn't a cosplayer, but she was an older woman who had been sewing like since her teens, like, I guess, like back in like the 60s and stuff like that. Mm. And even she Mm -hmm. like kind of, you know, started chiming in and just giving us like all these tips and in things that I didn't know before that, you know, before I knew it, it was practically her panel because even though I was sitting up there at the podium, (laughs) like, you know, I was just sitting here like listening to her talk to everybody in the audience. And I was just like, wow, like, you know, even though my panel was about like sewing for cosplay, like it, I'm not different. I'm not that different. I may be the redheaded right. child, but I'm not that different. <laughs> <laughs> no, what, one of the things I love with cosplay is that we take so many different things because there's, you know, there's sewing, there's armor, there's wigs, there's makeup, there's everything. And you are learning like little tips and tricks in all of these different skills. So when we meet like a professional person, like the first thing we do is like, okay, I'm going to ask you so many questions about <laughs> how you're doing this stuff. Cause because we just want to know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's and they and it's always it's always a blast because it's kind of like two different worlds coming together again, which is what I want, which is what I'm like ultimately striving for, bridging the gap between cosplayers and the general sewing community because I feel like we're we're like the redheaded stepchild and we're kind of intimidating and I guess because you know, we're so alternative, but it's just like the things that these <laughs> women have to teach, it's like I, I could totally use that. And like there are people that like crochet their cosplays and stuff like that. Like we're we're not different we're not different we're so all cool. connected by the stitches okay we are all connected we're yeah. not we're weird we're the weird kids but we're not <laughs> that different from you <laughs> and i just i really want more you know of these places to to see that and to recognize that and like especially around this time because like it's halloween like you know i love 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 the little ghost puppet you made that's awesome but get into this cosplay (laughs) i just made let's talk about this cosplay i just made Uh, so i'm gonna switch tracks back to basics a little bit i kind of want us to go around with our different levels of experience and like what we've tried and what we haven't um and just kind of talk about like uh where did it go patterns and machines and techniques so 
patterns. Uh, I guess let's start with that one. Do you guys have like a brand you like? Do you have a little tip or trick you'd say on on picking one? Anybody pipe up at once? Uh, <laughs> I, I was <wasn't laughs> sure. so I, I'm actually a, a pretty big fan of um, as cliche as it sounds. I'm a pretty big fan of simplicity and McCall's patterns. Um, just uh-huh. because, they, like, in terms of like their pattern offerings, they have come such a long way when it comes to the patterns they offer, uh, specifically for cosplay. Like McCall's um, released some patterns uh, that have like harley quinn and like the fifth element they have a lilu pattern they have um the umbrella academy uniform pattern so (laughs) yeah and it and i think it's absolutely awesome because uh you can actually like make use the pattern to make the entire costume with like zero modifications like i think mccall's recently released some my hero academia patterns like yeah yeah, like (laughs) so i feel like they they understand that we're here and they're making patterns specifically for us and it has never ever been done and so because of that i i really do appreciate them because i i grew up with like simplicity mccall's patterns way before they even got into Mm. like the costly game so seeing that they're making patterns of like pop culture characters like popular characters in pop culture that you know everybody cosplays you know for me it was just like okay there's no excuse for you not to try this pattern because it's literally (laughs) out here for you you can totally try it and it's a great place to start because there's no modifications um so i I really like simplicity in in mccall patterns a lot nice my favorite thing about those is because that they're not licensed to do my hero academia or harley quinn or anything (laughs) so you get my hero academia is actually superhero anime (laughs) high school pals Uh, (laughs) scary clown Uh woman Uh, Uh uh that's my favorite part about all of that is because like you know it would it would cost them so much to get the licensing rights just to say harley quinn on it so might as well just go around and name it something silly and i love it mm-hmm. it's it's the best nice i am a fan of like i i love that you said start with pillowcases um i think one of the ways you can kind of like level up your game is i think simplicity is the one that has like these uh easy sew ones that are like one or two hour garments and they actually like if you're starting, they may not be one or two hour garments, but they're very simple and they keep the directions very simple. Um, so you can go through and make something in an afternoon or across a couple of days and and just like leveling up those little amounts at a time. I I appreciate and love them. For yeah, that. <laughs> definitely. I actually got my start with um, Quixo, which I do believe is owned by Simplicity. Well, actually, they're everything that you see this owned by simplicity um it's all one (laughs) one company now um right but they used to have like a um a company called quickso and quickso was really known for like those two hour or like one afternoon patterns um Mm. that you just needed you didn't need any complex stitching if you do had a straight stitch you could make it and i I actually (laughs) still have some of those in my stash that i they're like some of my old faithfuls i still go back to those yeah (laughs) it's true it's true uh how about you v fire uh, I really like taking apart clothing that I have already. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> we didn't talk about that. Because I'll find, like, a shirt that I wear the crap out of to the point that it's just, it's old, it's got, like, those lovely, you know, armpit stains. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and It's well-loved. Well-loved, yep. yes. And rather than just throwing it away, I like to cut it up and make a pattern out of it and then keep the pieces. Uh, it, You know, I mark each of them and uh, it just, if it fit me and I wore it like crazy, I turn it into a pattern. Um, the main thing mm. to remember on those is the seam allowance. Because when you cut it, there's yes. no seam allowance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, you know, other than that, like... I don't know. That's how I've done a, a lot of my patterning. Um, like even when my mom was over the other weekend and we were trying to figure out how to pattern her tunic, uh, I look at her and I go, what size t-shirt do you wear? And she tells me and I'm like, okay, I'm going to use that. <laughs> uh, Cause it's got to fit like a t-shirt. And if she's happy with how, you know, certain size of shirt fits on her, then I'll use that as a pattern. 
Yeah, I like that. Um, so switching gears, how about sewing machines? Do you guys have brands you love, things you're loyal to, ones that are good for beginners? I'm going to start with you again, Kia. Yeah, um, great place to start. I am actually the proud owner of three machines. <laughs> nice. I, <laughs> nice. I have two standard brother machines and I have one brother serger. Um, so as you can see, that's where my loyalties lie. <laughs> mm. I am a very uh, big fan of Brother Machines. I I love their customer service for one. I find them very easy mm. to get in contact uh, with, and I I just I love that their machines um they come in really cute designs. I have one that's a Project <laughs> Runway styled <laughs> machine. Aesthetic is very oh, important yeah. to me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's very important. I gotta have something that looks nice. Um, so I do mm. have a Project Runway machine. All of my machines. Hold on, let me look at the other one. Okay, so both of two of my machines, which are my standard ones, are um, computerized, and then my serger is mechanical. So I just kind of move the dials um, myself. I, mm. I, I know that most people will tell you to go for mechanical. I'm a millennial. I like things with buttons and tech, and <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I, I really like my computerized machine because I can I can go from sewing a straight stitch to like a buttonhole in just you know a matter of like two buttons. And so I right. I like how easy it is for me to switch in between um, different functions on machine without having to remember the settings. Um, you know, when it comes to like moving things around and brother machines are generally pretty affordable. I think my project runway machine was probably 150. The very first brother okay. machine that I had, I bought for $80 at Walmart, but oh, nice. the ones that I have here, my cheapest one is my project runway and I paid a hundred and change for it. And I got it on Amazon um, as a Christmas gift back in 2014. And she still sews very beautifully. And I actually just treated myself to a heavy duty uh, brother machine just because I'm going to be doing some leather Ooh. on leather and fur projects um, this coming winter season. Ooh. So I absolutely love the brother brand. When it comes to searching for a machine, please know that expensive doesn't always mean better. Yeah. And that mm. don't be don't get caught up in all of the fancy stitches. If you see a machine that's like, oh, I have 77 stitches like my project modeling machine has know that you are probably only going to use about 10 maybe 20 mm. maximum um mm. decorative embroider stitches i've probably used like once and that's because i was trying to get cute um <laughs> but i don't i don't really use those i the, the see the three most important stitches to any cosplayer on a machine or rather it's two honestly is your straight stitch and your zigzag stitch because your zigzag yep. stitch it's what's going to allow you to properly sew spandex that doesn't come apart at the seams. And your straight stitch is generally for everything else. So you don't really have to spend a lot of money on a machine, especially when you're first starting out. There's no need to do that because there's going to be many times when you first start that you're going to get frustrated and you might put a project away for a couple of months. And, you know, at that point, mm. what good was spending that $200 on the machine? It wasn't a good investment. Nice. So I encourage yeah. people to, you know, shop around at places like Walmart or, or on Amazon and find a, a cheap machine there. And, you know, expensive doesn't always mean better, but just make sure that it has the, the stitches that you need and read the reviews. Always, always mm -hmm. read the reviews. <laughs> I can't stress that part enough. It's a piece of machinery, you know, so you need to know if after oh, sure. a couple of months, if something's not going to work right. Um, but yeah, I absolutely love all three of my machines. They all serve me well to create the costumes that you guys have seen me wearing. Nice. How about uh, you, V-Fire? Uh, <laughs> so I have five machines. <laughs> what? Wow. Oh my god. <laughs> First of all, you have, to show, me, you have to show me a picture of all of them. I want to see all of them. <laughs> uh, I have to dig some out. Um. V5 is talking dirty to me on this podcast, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> so dirty. You can't mark this as mature, V5. It's got to be family friendly. <laughs> so what, have, is your, what is your brand of choice, Mercedes? Uh, I'm not sure because I, well, my machine is a singer. My mother's is mm. a Viking. 
Mm. I'm not sure what my grandmother's and my great grandmother's machines are. They are frightening and I've used them once and they could sew and then I put them away because I was too scared to touch them again. Um, <laughs> those are you know, two that's to fair. Um, but that's fair. I've really loved my mom's Viking. That's the one that I learned how mm. to sew on. And like it just it's a workhorse. Uh, mm. uh, Pannon, you and Melissa borrowed it for World Cosplay Summit. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah, and yeah! It survived you guys, so <laughs> <laughs> so you know it's good. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, my singer is a, it's a computerized one. It's uh, it does all right. Like, um, I mean, I go and I service the machines that I use once a year, and I try to keep them clean and all that kind of stuff. And it it hasn't super done me dirty. It can't like do anything super strenuous like the Viking can, mm. but I mean mm-hmm. it's. It's my main go-to for sewing. Um, and then my mm. fifth machine is, um, oh, also a singer. Uh, it's a <laughs> uh, overlock uh, serger um, that Sadie is amazing at yard sales. <laughs> Anytime y'all go yard selling, take Sadie with you. <laughs> she has the best luck and she knows how to cut a deal. Um, we were out yard selling a couple summers ago and this lady had a brand new serger sitting out and she's like, I just hate threading it. Mm. And I was like, oh, and she's like, yeah, she's like, I paid a $300 for it and I hate it. Oh my gosh. And uh, she's like, she said that she would sell it to us for 70 bucks with a uh, thread all included and the repair kit and the, the wow. manual and everything. Jeez. And uh, Sadie and I like went to like the corner because like the, the house was like on a corner. So we went like to the corner. We were like discussing and I was like, so how much money do you have? How much money do you have? We go back we like, <laughs> 50 bucks. <laughs> and she gave it to us. Wow. <laughs> And I understand why she hates it. It has the uh-huh. dumbest way to be threaded ever. And yeah. it's the most temperamental thing. Like, I'm trash talking wow. it now, which means the next time that I plug it in, it's going to hate me. Uh-oh. <laughs> um, it's very temperamental. I've had to rig certain pieces of it so it doesn't tear the thread uh, by mm. adding in, like, little ribbon loops instead of little metal hooks. <laughs> um, and, uh, like, I've made it work for you know and it's it's been a it's been a useful machine i really like it uh, nice. i want to say singer's not a bad brand um seeing as it's like the main one that i use uh but i really do love my mom's viking nice how about you david uh yes the the thing that i care most about <laughs> um, is sewing yes uh no i don't really have much preference i have two sewing machines um one was a gift from my sister-in-law before she moved to uh, Australia. Um, hmm. And it's it's this big giant machine and it's got buttons and I'm pretty sure that if I hit the wrong co- configuration, it can take me to the Mars. Um, <laughs> Uh-huh. I also have one that has like a little rotary dial for like, do you want a straight stitch? Do you want zigzag? You know, mm. that one's okay. I, again, I haven't used it all that often. I don't know. I, I If it doesn't come with foam and a nice knife to cut the foam, I don't know what I'm doing right now. <laughs> you know, that's okay because we're talking about like getting started and yeah. machines that are good for getting started. Um, I am definitely a fan of Brother. Right now I have a Janome uh that i use it's actually a quilting machine because i use a lot of like fabrics stacked on top of fabric stacked on top of fabrics because i make a lot of like purses and bags and stuff Ooh. um yeah. <laughs> so so i needed something that could go through several layers um i would love to someday get an industrial uh my favorite brand is juki oh, yes so. <laughs> I want one of those so badly so bad my word, so I'm bad. Right there with you ever since sewing uh, that job that we were sewing together i just oh my machines don't go fast enough yeah juki makes some really good industrial machines that can they can go through just about anything and they um, so when, quickly <laughs> when i used to do uh work on like sport mascots they would go even through like eight centimeters of not eight centimeters eight millimeter plasticine so like they are bam um, and then the sergers are pretty heavy duty too right now i have a, a 
it it does the job. It's a singer baby lock. Uh, it just kind of uh, it it works. <laughs> it it finishes seams that I need finished looking. Um, most of the stuff I do, like I line it or like if I need something finished inside, that's what I use it for is to just make sure stuff doesn't fray. Um, and that's, that's really what a serger, you know, it's for I just finishing that. seams and making sure that you can use stretch fabrics. And you could do a lot more um, with the serger, but it does involve, yeah. uh, cause I've done a lot of stuff with my serger, but it does involve, uh, knowing the machine very well. And that can also be mm, a very mm-hmm. daunting task, but mm-hmm. I'm also one of, I don't, I'm probably everyone else is probably normal, but I actually tend to kind of like read the manuals that come with my machines and then oh like test God, the different it's features. So right. Right. I mean, it's not a thrilling read, but like, it's so good <laughs> because you're like, no, I know how my machine works. And if it does, like, yeah, that means it's probably that happening. <laughs> right. Right. Like I tried to do the little like pearl edge hem and this one is just, it doesn't quite, it, it, it's a very weak machine, so it it struggles. Um, but but I still love it. Um, let's uh, talk about. I realized, uh, something. I realized something. I have yeah. five and a half machines. <laughs> How do you have a half a machine? Is it a mini one? It's a mini one that you can take. You oh can God. actually stick a battery in it. What I've and seen though is it one? Want one? <laughs> I forgot. I inherited that one um, from my grandfather-in-law. Uh, oh wow! It is the cutest little machine, and I've seen those, and I'm always like skeptical. Do they actually work? It's good for in a pinch. Okay. It can't back okay. Stitch. It only does a straight stitch, and it only goes forward. Um, I mean, I almost want if you to need a cosplay my hand repair. To, like making a costume with that. Like, can you just imagine someone? <laughs> oh my gosh! You know what? Challenge accepted. I think. <laughs> The handheld sewing machine challenge. I think I have to try now. You're throwing down the gauntlet right now. <laughs> yeah. Um, so speaking of different types of stitches, I kind of wanted to talk about everybody's favorite, like getting started basic technique. So that can be like uh, types of stitches. We talked about straight stitch, zigzag stitch, it can be like easing, darts, like what technique really helped you getting started. And I'm going to give Kia a second to think this time and go to Mercedes first. You say this to the person. You you have the person go first who is terrible at terminology. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> you, you can describe it. I will describe it. Yes. Good. Uh, one thing that I do know is, yes, that straight stitch and back stitch. Um, back stitches are important because if you get to the end of like a sleeve or something and you're finishing it off, if you do a back stitch, your thread is less likely to come undone. I learned that the hard way. Uh-huh. Um, the size of your stitch as well. Uh, your sewing machines, it'll be like, you can change it from like one, two, three, four. The bigger the number, the bigger the stitch. Uh, three and four, especially four, like anything higher than a four. Uh, <laughs> that's for a stitch that you plan on ripping out of the mach- the the clothing. I can words. Mm. Um, uh, that's what that kind of stuff is for. Um, or it's for decorative stitches where you need to have that top stitch be bigger or looser or so on and so forth. Um, but it's not for a structural stitch. You want to go smaller, Mm. but you don't want to go so small that you can't unpick it if you mess up. Um, I haven't had much use for using the smallest stitch setting (laughs) on my machine. (laughs) Uh, mostly because I'm too scared to because I always sew something inside out. Um, <laughs> yeah, I think that would be my main one that. is the okay. stitch sizing and remembering the back stitch. Nice. How about you, David? Um, so I will go back to like our previous episode when we talked about like me doing a taking a class and. Hmm. I think that's re- that was really helpful because we made pillows. It wasn't pillowcases. We we got mm-hmm. some quarters and stuffed them full of cotton. Um, mm-hmm. And like, it was just kind of like a safe environment to screw up because I had someone there holding my hand. Um, and it was, it was really comforting to know that like, oh, oh, like, I'm not going to sew this straight. Yeah, that's totally fine. It's going to be inside out. No one's going to see that. <gasps> oh my gosh, that's right. <laughs> Um, uh-huh. 
So yeah, like I, I may not remember all of the names of the stitches and things that have been helpful for me, but like mm. going to a place where other people are learning for the first time or people who are trying to like relearn the basics, that's going to be like super key. So when we're out of this whole quarantine stuff, that would be a good opportunity to be like, go to a local sewing shop, if not a Joann's or a Michael's or whatever, and like see if they have any classes and if they can teach you a lot. Nice. Nice. How about you, Kia? I think one of the most important things um, <clears throat> for someone just getting started to know is how to make darts. And I say that because it, it's it's very easy for you to figure out um, how to use the stitch functions on your machine. You'll pick that up relatively quickly once you put the, you know, your foot on the pedal. But I think, you know, learning about how to use darts and the placement of the dart is a great place to start if you're going to be sewing for cosplay. Um, the dart, mm. a, just a, it's such a simple little thing that thing is, but a simple dart is what's the, is the difference between a bodice or a shirt fitting you um, comfortably to something that is just on you. Like there's a difference between you wearing something and then something on you. And I mm. think for me personally, when I wear a garment that doesn't have a dart and it should, I just feel like I'm just wearing this fabric. But when I have a dart, <laughs> like at the bust or in the back, I feel like, okay, this, this garment is fitted. It fits me. Mm. It has the, all the makings of, you know, a garment that fits you. And mm. I have seen many like, and even in my own creations too, where it's just like, you know what, like this really needed to have a dart and you didn't do it. And I didn't even, <laughs> I didn't even know. And you know, you know, what's funny. I actually, cause I live in New York city. Um, so I have, I'm actually a block away from like the fabric district if I was in my office. Um, and there was one time that I made, mm. I made a bodysuit for Cami from street fighter. And I took this, the bodysuit to like mood fabric. And I went up to one of the, the girls that was like cutting fabric. And I said, Hey, listen, this doesn't fit me right and i don't know like why and she's like did you sew a dart and i'm just like oh what what would, like <laughs> <laughs> the face that i gave her was just like what are you talking about and she's like <laughs> did you sew a dart are there darts in the, the in the bodysuit and i was just like sis what like what is a dart <laughs> she, so she took the garment and she pinned it and she drew like with a little sharpie, and she said, "If you sew, across, go home and sew across this line. Go sew across this line, these lines, and then put the garment on again." And I swear, it changed my religion. Okay. <laughs> and, I, I, and, I, I, and okay, so and this is another example of me going off the deep end. This bodysuit that I made was actually sewn with four-way stretch vinyl. I, oh. yeah, I was all in this costume, okay? I'm like, I'm going to have oh. this shiny Street Fighter cosplay. Oh, yeah. Didn't even know how to sew a bodysuit. So once again, please make a mock-up. Don't jump off the deep end like I did. But I had, <laughs> I had chosen this really expensive fabric. It was like $18 a yard. I had chosen this uh -huh. really expensive fabric and didn't even know how to make it fit because I didn't Oof. know what the purpose of a dart was. Or how to even make one. <laughs> I knew what the so straight stitch just, was because the garment itself was made with straight stitches. And that's another problem that was with that that piece. But, you know, whatever. But, <laughs> you know, knowing how to make something fit and, you know, the little things that you have to sew into your garment to make fit. I think that's really important. Mm. Just real quick for our listeners at home. Will you tell them what a dart is? Yes, <laughs> I will. So a dart is a marking that you make in a garment, most commonly made in a bodice, sometimes in the front or in the back. And this, d the purpose of this dart is to allow a garment to fit against you and to take in the ease and provide shape. Um, oh, I wish I could show a picture of this. I think I, I think I may have <laughs> That's some. the hardest part. I, of I, I, <laughs> <laughs> um, but it, it's, it's, it's sewn together. Um, to take in the ease and provide shape to a garment, especially for like a woman's bust. So if you have a dress at home or if you have, if your mom has a dress, you just take a look at the dress and you see like some lines in this, like on the sides of each side of the bodice itself. Those are darts. That is what allows the garment itself to sit comfortably on the chest. Uh, darts can exist. Mm -hmm. It's most commonly seen in um, bodices on like dresses, but can also be seen in skirts and pants as well. Nice. 
So I did want to talk a little bit about your, at least a little bit about your work with um, Fabric Wholesale Direct. Um, Cause you talked about like how you got into it, which is amazing to me, but I'm really curious with how much stuff has gone online online lately. How do you feel like quarantine has changed the game for online fabric? Well, so for a little bit of background about myself professionally, I work in e-commerce and I have worked in e-commerce for six years now. So I think that really what it came down to is that people were already shopping online to begin with. Buying fabric was probably not one of those things. But I think with everyone being in quarantine, people have kind of been forced to experiment with shopping online with these fabric websites. And I'm honestly really happy mm-hmm. that they did. Um, just because I feel like a lot of these e-com stores that sell fabric, uh, they have amazing selections i don't just so full disclaimer even though i have a partnership with fabric wholesale direct i actually buy a lot of my fabrics on etsy from mom and pop stores and that's another that's another thing that i like about being able to shop from fabric online because i know that my money is going to a family and i know that quarantine hit everybody very hard and i knew that you know small businesses on etsy and other you know websites were just trying to make it and so For me, I was just, okay, I have a lot of stuff that I want to make this year, but I'm going to hop on Etsy and see whose mom and pop shop I can get um, patterns from or Mm -hmm. who I can get fabric from. Mm -hmm. So I get a lot of like really interesting, cool fabrics from Etsy, just from mom and pop stores. They have amazing things. Um, But with Fabric Wholesale Direct, uh, one of the things that for me, what they offer, which I can't find anywhere else, is just the affordability. The affordability of Fabric Wholesale Direct is really what attracted me to them because for with Fabric Wholesale Direct, you can get like satin fabric for like maybe two ninety nine a yard. And in the fashion right. district of New York City, which is where I live, I would pay probably five to six dollars a yard for the very same fabric. And so if you're <laughs> a, a cosplayer that's just starting and you want to get into making your own crafts, Fabric Wholesale Direct is great for that because they have a big selection of fabrics in many different colors at such affordable Mm -hmm. affordable prices another secret um that you wouldn't know unless i told you and i'm telling you now is that every (laughs) every costume that i have made in partnership with fabric wholesale direct costs under 35 dollars to make using their fabric yes even peach even peach even oh, dang. Peach That's, is made oh, dang. from, I believe she's made from a bridal satin, which is two ninety nine a yard on Fabric Wholesale Whoa. website. And I think I needed wow. six yards to make her. Wow. Jeez. The cost on every costume was under $35. Wow. Bridal satin for that cheap. That's really good. <laughs> I did have a question. So I know a lot of cosplayers love the, I guess, fabric store experience of being able to like go and touch the fabrics. How would you say uh, for them to, I guess, transfer that over to online? Like how, how do you pick fabrics online without being able to touch? So that is very hard. Um, and when mm. it comes to that, for me, I, I read product descriptions very carefully. Um, I know what a hundred percent cotton feels like, and then I know what half and half cotton feels like. Um, but if you're right. someone who doesn't know what that is, it's it's really it's it's honestly a gamble. There's really no easy way to recreate that brick and mortar experience. Um, but mm. with the fabric wholesale direct, you can actually order swatches. So if you have yes. like, fabrics that you're interested in, you can order swatches of those fabrics just to see, you know, if you're actually going to like them. I actually ordered swatches very recently because um my mother. And my father, they actually want me to make new uh, pillow cushion covers for their couch set that's in their backyard for next summer. And so oh, I cute. had to order some swatches from Fabric Wholesale Direct because my mother liked the colors, but we weren't too sure um, if the fabric was truly waterproof or not. And so I actually had to mm-hmm. order some swatches. And I think it was like 99 cents per swatch, which if you go to any fabric store and you ask for a swatch, you normally have to pay anyway. So with Fabric Wholesale Direct, I really just suggest, you know, copying online and ordering a bunch of um, swatches just to see, you know, how they feel. And then you can make your Mm -hmm. decision from there. But one of the things that I also like about Fabric Wholesale Direct's listings is that under like the photo, there's actually a little video of someone handling the fabric. So you can kind of like see how the fabric is going to like look when you have it. 
And a lot of people tend to leave reviews with pictures of the projects that they've made, which I think is really, really neat because mm-hmm. that's something that I don't see when I go to like a fabric shop. So that's something that you get online that you don't get in person. You don't get to see what other people have made with the exact fabric that you're buying. But when you buy from Fabric mm-hmm. Wholesale Direct, you have the potential to see what you could potentially create. And so I think that, gotcha. you know, even though it's not the brick and mortar experience, I, I still think it's pretty enriching and fun too. I love that. I, I was going to ask, like, what does Fabric Wholesale Direct do that like maybe other fabric sites don't? But I don't think I've seen any sites that do like have a video of someone handling the fabric. And that's so helpful. No, it, it definitely is because, you know, seeing a picture of the fabric, it's like, yeah, okay. And again, I work in e-commerce and I was a jeweler like once upon a time. So even I would see a listing is like, yeah, okay, it looks cool. But what does it actually look like when someone's doing something with it? And so getting to see someone play and manipulate the fabric too tells me a lot. Um, It tells me how light fabric is. It tells me if I need a Mm -hmm. lining when I'm sewing with it. It also tells me how Mm -hmm. like heavy or thick or thin the fabric is. So you you can get all that when you're shopping on their website. I love that. I love that. That's so cool. Do you guys have any other questions to send at Kia before we start to wrap up? Uh, no, I think, I think Kia, you've done a great job of like easing some of my concerns. And it's, it's definitely still one of those things that like, I'm going to sit down, I'm going to sew something and I go, well, it's not a straight line. I'm <laughs> terrible at this. Um, but I also know that like you, it, it, it sounds like you've taken this to heart for a very long time. And I, I appreciate just the like, now nah, you, you got to practice. You do. You're, you're not bad at it. You're just learning. I'm still learning. Okay. I still struggle, struggle sometimes with like installing a zipper where it's just like, I get to the last part of making a costume for fabric wholesale direct even. I'm like, Oh damn, I got to install the zipper. Eh, I'm gonna do it tomorrow. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Don't get me wrong. Sometimes I even abandon a project for like a day until I have to come back to it tomorrow for contractual obligations. But I'm just like, eh, no, <laughs> Mm -hmm. So I have my moments too, and I don't think I'll ever stop having my moments. Um, And so, but I want you to keep having that moment because when you keep doing that, I I swear you'll get better and you'll see the improvement and you'll even go back to some of your old costumes and just be like, wow, this was a wild ride. (laughs) (laughs) Nice. So Kia, we like to end our episodes with a cosplay horror story, or it can be like a wholesome, fun, like I learned something story. But is there one that you'd like to share with us? Yeah, so tis the season. So you're going to get a horror story, okay? Ooh, oh, okay. Coming spooky. Up. So, oh, and this is actually involving one of my spookiest costumes. So last, was it last year? Oh, no, it was earlier this year. Oh, my gosh. I think it was. I think it was January. I think it was January. Okay. So, <laughs> <laughs> this year's a blur, guys. Oh, yeah. It's been a blur. So uh, in the making of my Harley Who Laughs, this involved some cosplay armor. So a little, little off topic from like sewing, but hmm. this involved uh, some cosplay armor. And I made some pauldrons for my shoulders that had craft foam spikes on them. And... I was very iffy about these spikes when I first made them, but they looked really good and they held up to me wearing it um, in the house. So I booked a shoot with this photographer. Um, his name is Some Say I'm Modest. He's, he's really cool. And he was like, okay, I'm going to shoot this costume and we're going to shoot it like in Brooklyn. If you're not from New York City, uh, Brooklyn is like all the way down under from like Manhattan. And I'm oh, all the okay. way in the Bronx, which is like going towards Connecticut. I somehow managed to get the costume on the train from the Bronx to Brooklyn. I managed to put it on, walk through Brooklyn, take a couple of like, you know, behind the scenes, like video and photos and stuff, only to (laughs) meet up with the photographer. He sets up his equipment in this little like underground train station thing we found and the spikes break off the costume. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) no! Oh, oh. I, I am absolutely mortified, guys. I'm mortified, but I'm angry because I got you out the house. I got you on the train. I got you oh. from the Bronx into Manhattan, oh. into Brooklyn. I get to the shooting space. The photographer sets up his equipment. Oh, and my you gosh. Break, and you break off. And I don't know if you guys have actually seen a picture of like the Harley who laughs, but those spikes were so important. 
They were so important. And I was just, oh, I was so mortified. And I was embarrassed too, because I'm just like, oh my gosh, I plan a shoot with a photographer and my costume's falling apart. I look like such an amateur. <laughs> so it's also oh. like my pride was hurt. <laughs> Right. Oh, my that, that's a little beautiful. wounded. <laughs> oh. But with the help of my husband, who has been the first of all, he's been the most amazing person ever because every like finished final photo that you see on Fabric Wholesale Direct of one of my costumes, he shot that. Oh, he shot that. Oh, nice. Every like co- even like, like the recent costumes on my Instagram, he shot those. So he is oh, like literally cool. like my set designer. He's my stylist. <laughs> Yeah, he's doing everything over here so like he's the best but so he helped he was able to help me get them on for the shoot but i i that was honestly the first time that i had something literally break off me unprovoked it was unprovoked it was unprovoked it was already on me nothing i don't know if i looked (laughs) wrong maybe i breathed wrong but (laughs) it was that hurts and yeah, and again, as someone, I put a lot into my costumes. So for me mm. to have that happen, like my pride was just bruised. Mm. The pictures came out awesome, obviously, because my husband was able to save the day. But my ego was just like, Aww. it really wasn't there. And like, part of my shoes is having my ego. And so, <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah. So it was that was honestly the most horrifying like cosplay thing that I've ever. Um, been through ask me about burlesque though i got plenty of stories <laughs> well, i was gonna say tell us tell us one more time like where we can find you online and about some of your projects yes yeah, so online you can find me on instagram facebook twitter and youtube as kia sangria and as far as my projects i am actually working uh with fabric wholesale direct again this month and i will be making a snow white costume Ooh. and so you will be able and it's made out of satin because that's my vice and <laughs> you will be able to see how that costume came to life once it has finally complete and i really do hope you guys will take a moment to read it i consider yeah. snow white to be uh, she's a very beautiful disney princess i'm super excited to cosplay her um, Definitely. Yeah. So this is a costume that I'm very excited for. And I'm really excited to show people how to make it too, because I'm going to deviate a little bit from the pattern. Um, but I will explain to you guys what it is that I'm doing and how you can do the same thing to make this costume your own, should you choose to do the same one. And then also this month, you will be able to uh, catch me with TZ Roosevelt in her American Tit Story burlesque show, which will be available for rental or purchase on Vimeo between October 27th and November 3rd. Um, Yes, you will get to see a never before seen act, God Breast America. (laughs) Yes. To get details on that show, you can visit uh, information for this show at www.titstory.com. That's amazing. The pun, you, you may not want to, to do go to that website while at work. Yeah. <laughs> you, unless you're working from home. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kia Sangria. We are so excited to have had you on the show today. Um, dear listeners, if you would like to uh, send us an email on future guests you'd like to see, topics you'd like us to cover, or to share your horror stories, you can send those to us at cosplaystitchandseam at gmail.com or... Or you can go to the website, cosplaystitchandseam.com, and fill out the contact form there. Or or you can send us a message on our Facebook page. While you're there, join our group, share the work in progress Wednesdays. And if you're already on the internet, leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, or wherever they let you. We'll give you a shout out on the show. Uh, If you want to help support the show some more, not only sharing it with a friend or family member and leaving that review helps us out, but we also have a Patreon. Right. Patreon.com forward slash cosplay stitch. You can join the awesome people like Gloria Shu, Sudi, Stacy Pitt, Shock H, and Silver Deeds. And if you don't want Patreon, we also have a coffee account and you can just kick us a few bucks. That helps with our overhead and make sure that we, we continue to make a great show for you guys. Yay. Thanks so much, guys. Uh, thank you again to Macy Roberts for the use of our theme song. And big thank you to David Jeffers, as always, for the editing on our podcast. Tell us about the podcast goings on in your area. Yeah. Uh, Dungeons and Chill, we had a great moment in our Curse of Strahd where we convinced an entire town to come raid the church for pancakes. It was fantastic. (laughs) Amazing. 
And then on Comic Trades Monthly, we got to bring back an author. Uh, his name is Adam Lawson. He wrote a new book, and we talked about his Kickstarter um, and the great tropes that horror and horror comics can bring out in people um, and what we can learn from them. Um, so yeah, definitely go check out that one because that's Sweet. I love working with Adam. He's such a great guy. Nice. All right. Thank you guys so much for listening. I hope you guys are staying safe and making good choices and being that positive change that we all need right now thank you so much for listening bye everybody bye bye, bye. bye.